Hi everyone, and thanks for joining our first webinar in a series of webinars focusing around WSO2 updates. Um, so our first webinar will be focusing on how to update your WSO2 product using our tools. Um, this webinar will be conducted by myself and Kasun Siembala Pitya. Um, Kas both Kasun and myself are engineers from the installation experience team. We mainly focus around um, the delivery and creation of updates. Um, moving on to our first slides. Uh, why, why do we need updates? Why do we send updates? We at WSO2 continuously improve our products with bug fixes, security fixes, and various other improvements. Every major release of a WSO2 product is followed by a series of dot releases that roll up all the recent updates. We want everyone evaluating, developing on, or preparing a WSO2 product to have the best experience and especially not to trip over a bug that has already been fixed. In order to make this process much easier, we have uh, introduced tool that will allow you to get updates to the latest that will allow you to get latest updates as 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 and when we release them and how do we send these updates we mainly have two tools both the tools are command line tools namely the wso2 updates manager commonly known as the one client tool and the recent addition to our list of tools the in place updates tool these are the two tools that you can use to get connected to to our, uh, these are the two tools that can be used to get updates onto a WSO2 product. And um, also, if, on the important note, all our updates, all the updates released, all the updates applied, are licensed under EULA 2.0, thus can be accessed only using a valid subscription. This subscription may be a paid subscription or it can be a free trial subscription. As long as it's a valid subscription only, license, uh, the updates can be accessed. If you do not have a, a, a subscription yet, you can sign up for a free trial subscription, which is valid for two weeks from this mentioned URL. Uh, so our tools connect to two main endpoints in order to obtain updates. These two endpoints are listed uh, listed in this following slide. If you are to uh, run our tools and obtain updates, and if you are behind a firewall or a proxy service, it is uh, mandatory to whitelist these two updates so we can um, so our, our tools can connect to the endpoints and have a seamless update experience on to the on on the product. Okay, so my colleague uh, Kasun. Right, we'll be dem demoing the one client tool as well as its functionalities right now. Thank you, Naira. So let's see how one client plays a major role in WCW story. One client is a command line tool that you can use to download or add WSU products and to update them. So these are the uh, capabilities which are provided by one client. It allows you to search and add WC2 products to your product repository. So in here, product repository means a location in your local file system where you can, where the one client manages WC2 products and it allows you to list or remove WC2 products from your product repository or the uh, from one client. And it allows you to check for the availability of updates for your WC2 products. And if updates are available, it allows you to update your WC2 products. And let's say if you have updated the WC2 product, then you will end up with two zip files. The one, the, the one is the previous file, which was before the update process started. And the later is the updated pack, which is having all the updates. So you can create a diff between these two packs and you can apply that diff in your environment so that the pack in your environment gets updated. So these are the commands commonly used in one client. So one minute is used to initialize one client with your credentials. One search is used for is 
can be used to identify what are the products which we deliver through WAM. And WAM add can be used to add WC2 products to your product repository. WAM list can be used to identify what are the products which are currently maintained or managed by WAM client. WAM check update is a command which you could use to find out whether are there any updates available for your w, for WC2 products. And if updates are available, WAM update is a command you should run to get updates. And as I said previously, you can use the WAM diff command to get the diff between two update levels, two update levels of a product pack. And WAM delete is the command which you could use to delete the product from WAM client. So without further ado, let's have a, a quick demo on WAM client usage. So before we start, you need to have download and install WAM client on your machine. For that, you can go to wsudo.com slash update slash WAM or else you can just search in Google WAM WSUDO, then you can land on that page directly. So as you can see, when you when you click the download button, you will be prompted with multiple download options, which depends on the operating system and the architecture you use. So since I'm on Mac OS, I will be using the Mac OS downloader for the installer. So as you could see, when I click the install button, download button, the page automatically scrolls down, scrolls down to the section where it shows all the instructions which needs to be followed in order to install one client on your machine. So since I'm using the Mac OS installer, all I need to do is just download it and it and run it, run it. So in this location, I have already downloaded uh, from installer. Let me zoom it a bit. So let's first install one client. So since Neela has installed a previous one client version, it is uh, giving a warning that it will be removed and the newest one will be installed. So this is a, a installation wizard which you use every day. So all you need to do is just uh, press continue next like that. So this is the new Uvula tool version. So you please go through it and uh, identify what are the terms and conditions we are mentioning. After you read the license, you can press agree. Then it is same as all the installers or the installation wizard. So this will install one client. Okay, now the one client is successfully installed on this machine. So in order to test whether one client is successfully installed on your machine, all you need to do is just run one command. So when we run one command, you could see all the available commands which are provided by one. So now we have successfully installed WAM in this machine. So to get updates, what you need is a valid WSU subscription. As Neera mentioned earlier, since WSU updates are delivered via under the EULA2 license, in order to download and keep WSU updates and use them, you need to have a valid WSU2 subscription or else a free trial subscription account. So for the demonstration purposes, I have created an email account with a free trial subscription. So we are good to go now. We both have one client installed and a free trial subscription. So first, we will initialize one client with our credentials. So as you could see, it is giving a warning that it is creating a product repository in this location and update repository in this location. So this is the product repository or the, this is the location where one client manages its WSU products or maintain WSU products. And this is the location where one client 
maintains the updates and downloads. So you need to provide the email address now. So once you are successfully authenticated, you will be prompted with a login screen, welcome screen, like this, showing the most commonly used commands. So WAM search and all these are the most commonly used commands of WAM. So now you have successfully initialized WAM. So, but we haven't added any product yet. So let's first see what are the products which are provided through WAM. For that, you can simply run WAM search command. So here, if you scroll a bit up, you can see there are multiple latest products available here, APM260, IS580. And if you scroll down a bit at the bottom, it is asking the question whether you need to see all the available latest channels. So if I press yes, it will show you all the available channels. So in here, you could see some products are having both the full channel and the security channel, and some are having only the full channel. So what does the channel means? A channel contains a set of updates which satisfies a category. So for example, the full channel contains all the bug fixes, feature improvements, and security fixes while the security channel only contains security fixes for a particular product. So let's say, let's assume, or let's say that we want to add WC2 IS pack, IS pack, IS580 pack. So all you need to do is just run one add WC2 IS580. So this will, prompt you the size is needed. So, let's wait a bit till it gets downloaded. Okay, now the IS, WC2 IS580 product distribution is successfully added to the WAM product repository. To verify it, you can run the WAM list command, which shows you all the products which are currently managed by WAM client. So IS580 is available there. So now we have added the product. So let's see what are the, are there any updates available for this product? For that, let's, so you need to run one check update command and give the product back. So WC2 IS580. So this will give you a brief summary of the updates currently available. As you could see, there are 52 updates and there are nine critical security updates. So WS strongly recommend to apply these updates in a production environment as soon as possible. So since there are updates, let's update our product distribution. So like all, most of the WAM commands when you run most of the WAM commands, it will automatically prompt you the next command to be run. So in here, we first ran the check update command. So it is now giving us a hint that you can run an update command to update your product. So let's update our product. For that, let's 
one more update. Like this and press enter. So as you could see, it has already selected the full channel as the default channel. That's because we have not uh, provided the channel here. So let's say if you want to download updates or get the updated pack in security channel, all you need to do is just run one update, W2IS-YHC0 space the security channel. Now the updates are downloaded. It is creating the new distribution. So what does this preparing summary means? It will create a summary PDF containing all the uh, details about the updates which are applied on top of your earlier product distribution. So in here, you can see there are 52 updates applied and there are nine critical security updates so uh, this is a location where the summary pdf exists so this summary pdf exists in your uh, new, newly created updated product distribution and also it get mailed to you to the mail account which you use for initializing your client so let me check the mail So here, as you can see that I, uh, a mail has been received. So it is having the summary PDF, which th this is the same summary PDF, which is which exists in the updated distribution. So when we, let's download it and open it. So, So this also gives you a brief description on the updates which on the top of the summary PDF, it gives a brief description of the updates which were applied. So 52 updates were applied and there are nine security updates. And in here it is giving you all the details of security updates which were being applied. So if we click a one security update here, You can see the details of the security vulnerability, which is which was being fixed, and all the security updates are mapped to a security advisory. So if you want to go to the security advisory, you can click here. So this is the security advisory related to that security update. You can see the impact level and all those security details. So if we go up. Go up to the top of the page again, top of the summary PDF. So as you can see, it is having uh, another set of updates which contain instructions so these instructions are not mandatory to be performed. So these are needed to be performed if necessary. So that's because all WSO2 updates are provided with a, a default value hard coded in. So if you either do the change or with, without the uh, if you perform the chain or without the chain, the pack can work well. So for example, let's say we click this update.
So as you can see here in the instruction field, it is giving you the instruction that at this configuration only if the capability is required. So you can either enable this or if it is not required in your setup, you can just leave it. So in order to identify what are, what are the instructions to be followed and what are to be neglected, please go through this PDF. So that's all about one update command. So let's go on to the rest of the demo. So now we have added a product. We have checked for the availability of updates and we have updated the product. Now, if we run a list command, You can see that there are two distributions available. One is the IS580 Vanilla Pack or the Fresh Pack, and the other is the updated pack, which is having a timestamp here, and the channel we use for updating the product. So let's assume this is the product pack, which is in a current running environment. So this is the latest pack. So you need to get the uh, diff between these two packs. For that, you can use the one diff command. So before that, let's uh, ha have a look at the one again. So when you run one, it will provide you all the available commands in it. So each and every command here has its own help. To get it help, to get the help for the main page, you can just run any command with minus minus help or else the shorthand minus h. So let's see the help of one diff command. One diff minus minus help or else the shorthand minus h. So as you could see, to provide to get the diff, you only need to provide the distribution name. So in here, now in the example, it is showing ESB this pack and this pack. So, so bear in mind that when you run the diff command, the, uh, it will generate a diff zip file. I will show you in a couple of minutes. It will be created in the same directory you are uh, currently uh, executing this command. So currently I'm in this location. So let's first run um, list again to get the uh, distribution names. So I'm um, diff. And also when you are providing so names of the distributions, don't you don't need the absolute path as I previously mentioned. Just paste in the product names is enough. Like this. So when you run this, it will go through these two different levels of product distributions and identify the updates which have been applied and it will create a PDF, a diff PDF, it is similar to the summary PDF and it will be in this location in the diff zip which is being created and also it will get mailed to you to the same email account or the same user account which you have used for initializing one client. So let's check that also. now. Here yeah, you can see that there's a separate mail, one diff with the title. So there's also, again, there's a summary PDF. So if we open it up, it is also having the same content as the one summary PDF because uh, we have updated between two, uh, the, from the fresh pack to the latest one. So let's move on to our final command in demo. Uh, before that, let's uh, 
open up the diff which is created. So currently I'm at this location. So in here, Give me a second. So this is the DC which was created. So let's accept it. So as you can see, this contains the change files from the two update levels. So if you move on to the repository, components plugins so this will have all the updated jars so what you all need to do is just get these files which have been updated and get this diff and apply it onto your environment so the in, uh, product distribution which is running on your environment will get updated to the level which you, which we have updated now so that's all about uh, main commands. The let's uh, to wind up the demonstration. We will run the last command, which is delete. So now you are having two product distributions in your product repository: IS580, updated one, and the vanilla pack. So in order, if in order to delete them from one repository or the product repository, you can use the one delete command. And if you prefer to delete all the IS specs, you can simply run WSO2 IS580, then it will delete the vanilla pack and also the updated pack. Or else if you want to especially to delete the IS580 C file, you can you can mention it like this. So it will delete only that C file. So let's delete all the packs like this so it will ask for a confirmation stating these products files will be deleted so when you press yes those will get deleted now to verify we will run the one list command again so it is asking you to add one med to add in add products so i hope you got an understanding of how to use one and to continue the rest of the session i will invite neela thank you um, okay thank you kasun so kasun was explaining us of the functionalities of the warm client and how it works so i will be continuing on the session with the uh, with the ex functional explanation of the in place updates tool and, and, and how it works, uh, its commands. So in place updates tool is a command line tool, just like one app, one client as well. So this tool uh, com comprises of a functionality uh, to merge updates on top of a customized product. As Kasun showed, when you obtain up update using the one client, it will create a new product distribution. Whereas in the in-place tool, if you run it on an existing product distribution, it will update that customized product distribution by merging configurations and any customized artifact. The, uh, the customized product distribution consists of. So this tool uh, is capable of determining which updates are relevant and to your, is capable of identifying your product and uh, identifying which updates are capable, uh, relevant to your product, downloads them, and installs them while merging configurations. It also is capable of resolving merge conflicts. Suppose uh, suppose you have a file customized where that file, so uh, let me uh, start by saying what a conflict is. So a conflict is when a text-based file has a modification on the same line, if and only if has a modification on the same line where an update is applied onto, it has to be the same line, then it will create a merge conflict. So our tool is not able to 
merge the update on top of your customized change on the particular file. In that case, it will create a merge conflict where you will have to manually resolve. It also is capable of weaving details on updates, for example, which components were updated, which files were added, which files were deleted. And it all, prior to applying an update, it takes a backup of the product on its non-update applied state, which can be used for you to revert to the previous state in case of uh, in case if you want to revert. The newly added feature to the in-place tool is the update simulation feature. So it is capable of simulating the update on top of your applied product, uh, configured customized product distribution. That is, it would not apply the update on top of your product distribution, but take a copy of it and run the sim simulate the update on top of it and let you know if there are any conflicts prior to you running the actual command, uh, actual update on top of your product distribution. Uh, so how do you use the in-place tool? So the in-place tool is quite simple to use. It only has one command and multiple flags that facilitate the functionalities I mentioned in the previous slide. So in-place tool uh, is sent, is, not, is currently not available in the GA product packs release so far. It will be available in the few next releases but uh, right now it's not available. It is sent to all products as an update. So you can uh, simply take an uh, one, uh, updated pack from the one client tool uh, for the latest timestamp and you will have the in-place tool in it. So you can uh, there onwards, you do need not use the one uh, client tool to obtain updates. You can simply proceed with the in-place tool. Just one command will do all what you told. It will identify your product, identify relevant updates, download them, take your backup, and update your product distribution. It's a simple command. And also the tool is uh, tool is OS dependent. So although I have specified the commands here as up, uh, pardon, update, if you are using a, a Windows-based installation, it will be update underscore windows.exe. If you are using uh, in, in a Linux-based environment, you will have to use update underscore Linux executable. So moving on to the demo. Before I move to the demo, let me um, just show you. So I have a AM product, ws 2 am 260 distribution in the bin directory. There are, you can find the in-place executable. The Darwin one if for you in Mac OS based systems, Linux one for Linux based OSs, and the Windows executable for Windows based, uh, Windows based environment. Since I am running this on a Mac, I will be using the update Darwin tool. Okay. So to get started with, so unless I have my product distribution, bin directory my tool name will be update darwin okay first step it will it will check for your valid subscription so all are, as i mentioned previously and as Kasun repeatedly mentioned all our updates can be accessed only if and only if you have a valid license so here you can enter your wso 2 account credentials this will be validated against the product you are trying to run. And if you have access to, you can press it. So I will be entering my WS2 account credentials here. Once you enter uh, your credentials, you will be authenticated and check if you possess a valid subscription. If so, your product will be identified. So here yeah, this uh, will identify the in-place tool is identifying the product as AM260. 
so um, and checks the in place home in the root directory of your uh, of your machine it would uh, create a in place home it will check the in place home to see if you have already downloaded the ga pack the vanilla pack of uh, the identified product if if so it would proceed if not it would download the product and then proceed so once it adds the product it tries to identify which channel this product has been updated from which channel in this case this uh, product was previously updated using the full channels hence it will use the full channel for the update process if it is unable to identify the channel you will be prompted to enter the channel and it will be validated against your subscription um, then it will check and identify what are the relevant updates so in this case it identifies that there are 13 updates for the particular product where to work critical security once I, the, the tool identifies that there are updates to be applied it will create a backup that is take a, a copy of your current distribution and store it in the updates home for us to revert in if if you need to revert into re revert to previous state then it downloads updates needed to merge files and downloads updates that are needed uh, to move to the next versions once it downloads and verifies the updates it starts merging uh, installs the updates and starts merging so if uh, merging is successful uh, it would create the summary and build the updated build uh, have build the updated distribution for you so the summary would uh, be a quick summary would be of the number of count of updates uh, updates applied as shown in the the terminal and the similar to the warm client tool it will also send you the pdf with the detailed version of what updates what the security updates are what are the instructions if applicable and what are the security uh, security uh, advisories corresponding to each security update so that's it that's that simple to update just one command will i will validate your subscription will identify your product download your identify if there are any relevant updated updates for you download them and merge into your customized distribution that's uh, that's uh, that's the basic um, basic functionality the in place tool provides okay another interesting command of in place tool is the mine revert functionality so remember i explained to you when we ran the update command it created a backup so now if i run a revert command against this it will this it will uh, replace my updated distribution with the last backup i uh, took so done now you have reverted back to your last uh, last state of your product prior to obtaining an update then we also have another interesting tag which is minus minus d details this flag will update your product and also apart from updating the product it will review details on the updates that is what files are added what files are updated and what files have been removed let's simply run this command to see what uh, what these 13 updates have added modified or deleted on this am distribution that we are trying to update So as you can see, it did not ask prompt for my validation. Uh, this is because by tokens obtained about against my previous validation is still valid. Um, if your tokens expire, if and only if they expire, the tool will prompt you again on your next uh, update attempt. Okay, so now you can see um, a list of files that has been updated or modified with these 13, um, 13 updates are listed here. 
So similar, these 13 updates have modified these 13 files, which you can at a glance take uh, have a look at. You need not go to the uh, summary PDF to give the details of which files were updated and which files were were added, deleted, etc. Another uh, the last feature that I want to rip, the last flag that I want to demonstrate on the in place updates tool is the dry run flag that simulates an update of an of, of, of update onto your customized product. So um, since this product is on the latest state right now, we've obtained an update. We won't be able to simulate it. Hence, I'm going to revert it back to the uh, previous state, which is updates uh, with no updates applied through the with the uh, reverting the 13 updates that I just applied with the in-place tool. Okay, so once I, uh, so you can simply create run the dry run flag. So when, when you run the dry run flag, um, the update identification process, the download process is similar, but the application process, it does not apply to the uh, customized, uh, to your customized distribution that you are currently running the tool on, but it will simulate onto, onto it. So your product is not update, actually updated, but you may know if there are any conflicts that it might cause when you are create, running the update. Okay. So now my simulation on top of the customized product has ended. As you can see, um, there is zero conflicts. So, uh, so the simulation has been successfully completed. Um, another, okay, so um, what happens if you have conflicts? Now this is a dry run, so having conflicts is not, it's not it won't create conflicts on your actual distribution, but uh, on a simulation on a feed. Suppose when you are running the update command, if you do get conflicts, how do you resolve conflicts? Okay, so in, as I mentioned earlier, in place tool will create a conflict if and only if. I mean, let me highlight on this. If and only if your uh, if and only if your uh, text-based file has a modification on a particular line that the update that the update we are trying to apply on is if it's on the same line it will create a conflict in that case the tool will give uh, generate two additional files apart from the customized file you already have that is the uh, suppose it's text a text a dot old which is the original file at that particular timestamp which unmodified uncustomized as well as uh, the updated file for the latest timestamp that you are trying to update your product to unmodified uncustomized you are expected uh, to go to these two files together with your customized distribution to identify uh, what caused the diff uh, sorry what caused the conflict and manually resolve it and and uh, name the rename the file as final and run the tool against the pack again with the minus minus continue flag. Then the tool will uh, continue with the remaining update application process and complete the update application process on top of your customized distribution. So um, that's pretty much it on the demo on in place updates tool. If I summarize what uh, I just demonstrated, it is a command line tool capable of uh, updating a customized WS, uh, uh, customer it is a command line tool capable of updating a customized WS2 product distribution it is it identifies your product downloads a relevant GA if necessary then identifies uh, if there are any relevant updates downloads them and merges uh, applies the updates and merges configuration changes if any, on top of your customized product. So you need not do any manual, um, any, any manual merging of uh, configurations. And that brings you, uh, that brings us to the end of 
our session. So if you do have any questions which you need clarification on to, please feel free to ask. Okay, so we have a question, um, how the in-place tool itself gets updated. Yeah, uh, yes, the tool, uh, so let me uh, make a statement prior to answering. The in-place tool is capable of updating itself. It's a self-updatable tool. So if you want, you need not worry about uh, keeping your in-place tool up to date as the in-place tool uh, has a version check which it runs uh, Prior to uh, updating the product, prior to updating a product, it would run a version check uh, against and identify if the tool needs to be updated and updates itself. Okay, uh, another interesting question we have is how does the in place tool merge any web app var which is customized with specific modified JSP pages? All right. So was is a special case handled by the in-place tool. Uh, prior to handling update on to, onto a war, it identifies and sees whether the war has been extracted previously. That is, if you have run the server at least once, the war will be extracted. And then it applies updates on top of this extracted war. It will not delete or remove any of your configurations, any of your changes for your JSP files, uh, any of the text files you have um you have it will not delete it will uh, so it will uh, identify the changes within the war does not uh, replace the war uh, does not replace your extracted war it will identify changes within the war and update non-text files directly all non-text files will be updated directly the, for example a dot jar you have that will be updated directly and text files, JSP files, JSON files, Jaggery files, all these are considered as text content based files. This will not be uh, replaced. It, they, your changes, your updates will be merged on top of your changes in such way that it does not, uh, it does not break, the, break the behavior. If the tool is unable to, unable to, uh, merge the update on top of your customized JSP file that lies within a WAR, a WAR file, again, it will uh, create a conflict requesting you to manually merge it. That also, if and only if, as I mentioned, if the updated line it has been modified by you. Um, okay, so, we have a question how to start the in-place tool. Um, as I mentioned, the in-place tool lies in the bin directory of the updated product, bin directory of an updated product. You can simply, uh, based on your OS, whether you use a Linux-based system, you, then you have to run uh, in the bin directory, you have to run, uh, run the update uh, Linux executable. If you are on a Windows-based uh, OS, then you have to run the win update windows executable or you can um, if you're on a mac base os you can run the update darwin executable to simply start the interface tool um okay we have another question on asking whether is it possible to change the uh, Location that the update tool saves the backup. Okay. Um, update tool saves the backup on the in-place home, and this in-place home is configurable. So if you want to change the location of the uh, backups directory, that is, uh, which lies in the updates home, you can simply change the config YAML. Uh, let me actually show it for you right now. So this is my uh, product distribution. In the updates directory, 
I have a config YAML, which um, which contains met, uh, meta information about uh, my product distribution, etc. So you can simply change this uh, updates home folder to whatever folder you want to. Uh, if you do do not want uh, to write to the default uh, default updates home folder, you can uh, change the update home to any folder of your preference. Is it uh, can the in play? Okay, another question we have is can the in place perform with uh, perform updates with specific timestamp? Yes, it is capable of performing updates with specific timestamp. You simply have to run the tool but with the minus T flag. Uh, uh, let me just demonstrate it to you. So this is how you normally run an update. If you want to run it against the timestamp minus T, uh, with one, two, three, or whatever your timestamp you want to run it against with the minus T's timestamp, you can uh, run the in place tool against a specific timestamp that you want to obtain updates. Uh, okay, we have a very interesting question on regards to the merging of updates. Does the in place tool handle uh, the indentation? Tab space or uh, tab or space related uh, split based uh, conflicts. No, it is not capable of handling them. We have uh, we have written a. If you go, on, I will share the um, the link at the end of this webinar. We have written a best practice guide uh, in order to avoid conflicts, which cons consists of uh, which consists of. Uh, uh, which consists of a list of best practices that can be followed uh, in order to avoid uh, avoid conflicts. Are the additional flags documented somewhere? Is another question raised. Yes, all flags are documented in our wsu.com page, uh, uh, docs page uh, for in place tool. Um, I will share the um, share the docs link, uh, which also contains details on my my previous on the previous question asked the best practices guide. Uh, I will share uh, I I will get the organizers to share it with all participants, so you can go through the uh, docs and ident documentation for the in place tools flag and uh, see, see if it caters your your requirements. Um, okay, so that's that's all the questions we are capable of answering at the time being due to insufficient time. We will, uh, if there are any additional questions you want to ask, please feel free to uh, drop them or please feel free to email them to myself or Kasunsi. Uh, our email addresses are mentioned on the will be mentioned on the first slide deck, which you can email on to. Moving on, what's next? What's next with WS2 updates? In, in terms of this webinar series, our next webinar conducted by Vimukti Pereira and Savindu Dayal will be focusing on how configuration management tools are used to induce configuration management changes as well as updates. Let me highlight this, how to induce configuration changes as well as updates onto your WS2 product deployments. And what's next in terms of the in-place tool is currently we are working on a very interesting project of bringing in offline updates capability to the in-place updates tool. Suppose if your product runs on a lockdown environment where you do not have internet access, how will you update the product? So currently we are working on this and hopefully we'll be, we will be able to give you a solution around this very soon. So that's it from us for today. Thank you very much for joining our webinar. Please do, please do join the remaining of our series to be updated on all WS2 updates. Thank you very much.